And we're back, folks, right here on WrestleRant. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews. And every single Tuesday right here on the show, I break down all the pay-per-views that I watch on the WWE Network. And today we're talking in preparation for Backlash this Sunday. Today we're talking Backlash 2016, last year's installment, as seen on the network. Uh, so I really like the show a lot. I know I'm breaking my own rule and not reviewing the show one year after the fact. Because uh, this event initially aired in September of 06, you know, uh, 2016. So it's only been about eight, nine months. So really not that long. It's not like it's a month later. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, but I like the show a lot. I was going to rewatch it anyway, so why not review it? Um, this was the first brand exclusive pay-per-view of the second brand split, the new era, whatever, for SmackDown. A SmackDown show this was. And a really good show at that, really kind of ushering in this new era for the blue brand and uh, bringing upon a new sense of change for the Tuesday night program. So I won't talk about the kickoff show. I never talk about the kickoff pre-show matches here on WrestleRant. Uh, that is separate from the pay-per-view itself on the network anyway. So you can go out of your way to seek that out if you want to. Uh, the kickoff match did see Baron Corbin beating Apollo Crews. In a good match, nothing too newsworthy, nothing too noteworthy, but it was all right for what it was. Kicking off the actual show is the SmackDown Commissioner Shane McMahon and the SmackDown General Manager Daniel Bryan basically talking about SmackDown being the land of opportunity, Backlash being a, a big opportunity for SmackDown to really shine and all their new stars and the fresh, face, fresh faces, blah, blah, blah. So normally I wouldn't kick off a show with a fucking GM promo, uh, an authority-esque promo, but this didn't last too long. The crowd ate it up. They love Shane McMahon. They love Daniel Bryan, so who can really complain? That was all right. And also kind of hyping up the women, too, and making that match feel uh, monumental. So that was the opener, a six-woman tag team match, a six-pack elimination match for the inaugural SmackDown Women's Championship. The combatants included Nikki Bella, Naomi, and Natalya, Carmella, Becky Lynch, and Alexa Bliss. Uh, really good match. Early on, it kind of felt like, okay, one person's in the ring at a time, like two people are in the ring at a time. And you can only really structure these matches in a way where it's like that. I'm glad they didn't eliminate someone right off the bat, as you typically probably would see in years past. They structured this match very wisely. Uh, Bliss was the first one gone, which is interesting, just because she would later go on to become the second ever SmackDown Women's Champion. But uh, yeah, she got tossed out, I think, by Naomi. Then Naomi was the next one to go by Natalia. Uh, Natalia was the next one to go by Nikki Bella. Nikki Bella was the next one to go by Carmella. And it came down to Becky Lynch and Carmella. Good final fun few, uh, few minutes from uh, Becky Lynch and Carmella. In the end, Becky Lynch locking in the disarmor on Carmella to force her to tap out and become the inaugural SmackDown Women's Champion. So, really fun match. One of the better women's matches. You know, I mean, there were a lot of great women's matches on pay-per-view last year. So, that's really not saying anything, you know, too bold or whatever. But uh, no, this was still a good opener, very good opener, with the right winner too. Becky Lynch had been long overdue for a run with a, any championship really, whether it be NXT or on the main roster, and uh, she finally got the win here, Becky Balboa, let's go baby, and I thought she did a great job here and a well-deserved win, and really kind of kicking off the, uh, the new era for the women on SmackDown in a big way. So we go from there to the Usos taking on the Hype Brothers in a tag team match to determine who would face Heath Slater and Rhino later on in the evening to crown the inaugural SmackDown Tag Team Champions. Uh, initially, it was going to be the Usos, or rather American Alpha, taking on uh, Heath Slater and Rhino. But So American Alpha beat the Usos in a semifinal match on SmackDown a week earlier on, on Tuesday night. But then immediately afterwards, the match ended in like 30 seconds. But the Usos then subsequently took out American Alpha, going heel, finally. It was so long overdue. So American Alpha were out. Usos took their place. Or not really. They had to earn themselves they had to earn themselves back into title contention by beating the Hype Brothers, who had already been eliminated from the tournament. Uh, so this was an alright match. Kind of just there. The crowd didn't care too, too much. The Hype Bros aren't really an overact by any stretch. Um, but this was still all right. The right team went over the Usos, scoring the victory and advancing to the tag title matchup later on in the evening. After that, for the Intercontinental Championship, we had The Miz defending the gold against Dolph Ziggler. In a match by this point we had seen so many times, whether it be, you know, main event in 2012 or Raw and SmackDown in, in 2013 or SummerSlam or Night of Champions in 2014. We had seen this match so many times it was nothing new. What made this match notable for me, and really for a lot of people to tell this is not you know just me speaking here. Well, it is, but I'm speaking for a lot of people. In that, what made this match and the whole feud so great, if you can recall, 
It was right before this The Miz cut that amazing promo on Talking Smack, right after SummerSlam, in the face of Daniel Bryan, saying he was the greatest Intercontinental Champion of all time, saying that Daniel Bryan couldn't live up to his promise of defending that title after retiring from the ring, and how he wasn't getting the respect he deserved, and blah, blah, blah. One of the greatest promos in the past 10, 15 years, or at least since of the, of the PG era, whatever. It was fucking great, bottom line. So that really revitalized the, the Miz character. And right before coming out to the ring for this match, he had confronted Daniel Bryan backstage and said, I want a clause, or I want to reno, re, renegotiate my contract. I'm such a high priority for this brand. You need this championship on your show. I want to renegotiate, renegotiate my contract and do basically what you couldn't and bring back honor and prestige to this championship. In so many words, that's what he said. Almost bringing Daniel Bryan to tears, which was great. Um, I love Daniel Bryan, but that was a great back and forth. Or really, the Miz scolding Miz, uh, scolding Daniel Bryan backstage. It was awesome. The match itself was great. These two put forth an awesome effort here. Fucking 20 minutes of in-ring time. If you get the guys the time to work, uh, they can produce some pretty damn good matches. And they had a lot of matches last year, whether it be on SmackDown, TLC, No Mercy, Backlash. This was the first of a long series of matches between these two guys. Um, but a really, really good match at that. The Miz ultimately emerging victorious. Still the Intercontinental Champion after Maurice had sprayed the can of hairspray or whatever it was in the face of Ziggler. Miz wins, still your champion. Telling that story with Ziggler, he could not win when it mattered most. Uh, so great stuff here. Definitely one of the better matches of the evening. After that was supposed to be Bray Wyatt taking on Randy Orton for the first time ever one-on-one. -on -one. And uh, news had broken earlier in the evening that Randy Orton had been hurt. But he wasn't like it wasn't a new injury, so I'm still not really sure whether this was the initial plan or not to do the bait and switch with Orton and Wyatt. I'm not really sure, um, even all these months later. But um, I had heard that Orton was still hurt following being busted open by Orton at at um, Orton by himself by Lesnar at SummerSlam the month prior, and he had still been yet to be cleared to compete which is why he wasn't in action on SmackDown at any point from SummerSlam to Backlash. Officials thought he would be ready in time. He wasn't, so they pulled the plug in the match at the last second. Um, so again, how true that is, I have no idea. Considering the, the, the path this feud would take over the next six to eight months, maybe that was the plan the entire time to do the bait and switch with Kane being put in there instead. So technically, Wyatt won the match um, via forfeit. And uh, so... But he didn't really win. I mean, the match basically didn't even really happen. So Kane has named his replacement, is named Orton's replacement, a uh, replacement rather, in a no-holds-barred match. So they tried. I mean, they put forth the effort, but just fucking Kane and Wyatt alone just does not excite me at all. Kane would win. So the weird thing was that, oh, you know, Orton can't take bumps. He can't, you know, hit the RKO, whatever, because he's still injured. Well, he went in there and hit the RKO on Bray Wyatt pretty perfectly leading to Kane scoring the victory. So that was weird. So again, whether it was planned that way or not, I'm not exactly sure. But um, still, it, it wasn't a bad match, just kind of boring, and they put forth a decent effort. I just was not a fan of fucking Bray Wyatt losing to Kane on a 2016 pay-per-view. That, to me, was just so stupid. Um, but at least the match was, was what it was. We had just seen it a million fucking times. I had no interest by this point. That was so SummerSlam 2013. So after that, we had the match to determine the inaugural SmackDown Tag Team Champions. It was Heath Slater and Rhino taking on the Usos. Pretty good match here. A lot better than the Usos versus the Hype Brothers earlier on. Just because Heath Slater and Rhino were gradually getting over with the audience. I know what a concept. Um, but a well-wrestled matchup. The crowd was behind Slater and Rhino the entire time. Usos had just turned a week earlier. So it's not like they had this incredible heel heat. But they did a lot to really work over the baby faces and garner that heel heat. So I thought that was good. Um, having a pretty pretty good match here. Picked up the pace in the final few minutes. In the end, Heath Slater pinning a downed Jimmy or Jay. I forgot who it was exactly. After Rhino gored one of them to pick up the SmackDown Tag Team titles. And he said afterwards, while cutting the promo to the interview or whoever that might have been, Charlie Caruso, whoever, uh, we're going to get a double wide, baby. Because this was the match where if Slater won, he would have uh, finally earned a SmackDown contract. So that was pretty cool. And again, I mean, it, it sucks they kind of dropped the ball on Slater after they dropped the belts a couple months later because they never really did anything with the guy after the fact. But as a storyline leading into Backlash, this was really good. The crowd responded very favorably. The match was good with the right winners too. And then the main event for the WWE Championship, AJ Styles contending for the gold against Dean Ambrose. 
Uh, the first ever big match between the two. I know they had one Raw match prior to this point in the main event of Raw a couple couple months earlier, but the first real big match between the two, and they did not disappoint. And Dean Ambrose is not a bad wrestler. Like, I know he's had some kind of disappointing matches in the past with Jericho and Bray Wyatt and Brock Lesnar, but with the right wrestler, he can really have some great matches. And AJ Styles was one of those guys. This was a really, really, really good match. They got a ton of time, 25 minutes. This match happened, I think, at the start of the show. At the start of the hour, sorry. Start of the show. Which was not unheard of, because they did do the WWE title match at the start of the show the following month for No Mercy. But, anyway. This, they, they started this match at, like, 10 o'clock. And they went off the air at, like, 10.36, which I thought was great. If you watch the show in its entirety, it's only 2 hours and 36 minutes long. So, no complaints whatsoever from yours truly. The shorter the pay-per-view, the better, in my opinion. It can't be an hour long, but... If it's a two-hour show, a two-and-a-half-hour show, two thumbs up. I hate shows that drag and whatnot and go overboard for no reason. So anyway, um, yeah, just a really, really good match. Just not even that AJ carried Dean Ambrose. AJ had an amazing showing here as well. So take nothing away from him here. Um, just a really, really excellent main event matchup for the title. And in the end, when the referee was not looking, AJ hitting Ambrose with a low blow. Following that up, the Styles Clash, we have a new WWE Champion. AJ Styles winning his first ever WWE Championship, uh, something we all thought would be unheard of years earlier, but at long last, he was champion with only nine months. Within nine months of arriving in the company, he was champion, so amazing stuff. So yeah, overall, really, really good show. Kicked off the brand-exclusive shows for SmackDown on a you know on a high note. I thought this was a, a really enjoyable show. You know, far from perfect. Keen and why it was not you know, amazing by any stretch. Really the weakest match of the show by far. But um, the three title match or four title match, four title matches rather, were all really good. Um, the Usos and um, Usos and Hype Brothers were, were whatever. And Bray Wyatt and, and, and Kane was whatever too. But on the whole, this was a, a hot crowd, a really good show, three new champions crowned. It really felt like a breath of fresh air in, in, in the uh, on the blue brand for WWE as they ushered in the new era in, in the company. So uh, good stuff. Check it out on the WWE Network before Backlash this Sunday. I talked about it three years ago, but I really want to go back and watch Backlash 09 too. That was a fucking awesome show. Love that from, God, eight years ago at this point. That's crazy to think it's been that long. But anyway, guys, so check out Backlash 2016 on the network. Enjoy Backlash on Sunday. And in the meantime, and in between time, you guys can follow me on the Twitter machine at WrestleRant. Find me on Facebook, like the page at facebook.com backslash graham.gsm.matthews. And support the channel by liking this video, leaving a comment, sharing the video, subscribing to the channel. And of course, next Tuesday, an all new episode of WrestleRant will be up covering In Your House 17, I think, whatever the next one was from uh, September of 99. I think it's not Bad Blood. Bad Blood is is October. I think the September show is Ground Zero. So it's in your only final, again, like I said earlier, we only have three more uh, in your house pay-per-views to talk about. And then I'm done. Then I'm done. I'm not with WrestleRant. I'll be still talking about 2016 shows and other specials from the network that are pay-per-view, you know, ask like Beast in the East and the NXT TakeOver specials and Arrival and shit like that. But anyway, so yeah, I think the next three WrestleRants or next couple WrestleRants with the exception of like Extreme Rules or whatever, um, in terms of In Your House, I'll be talking about In Your House Ground Zero from September of 97, then In Your House Bad Blood from October of that year, and then finally In Your House Degeneration X. And by that point, once I uh, film and record and watch In Your House Degeneration X, I will have watched every pay-per-view on the network. Every single WWE pay-per-view, not the WCW and ECW ones. I'll cover those at some point, but... Still, a pretty amazing feat, if I do say so myself. Only took me three years. Pretty much only took my, my, entire, my entire college career. And I'll be graduating this Sunday. Uh, so I look forward to that. So really, it's a, it's a great, you know, uh, kind of look back on it and think it's been that long. Really, I started doing these when I was a freshman. But I hate to ramble. Anyway, guys, have an awesome rest of your week. I'm Graham Jesus Matthews. Enjoy Backlash on Sunday, and I'll catch you guys down the road.